Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So my friends over at Yarnspirations.com and today we have the Interlocking Shells Blanket. Now what I did is that I had a pattern that kept getting requested and it was a pattern from Yarnspirations.com that we taught and it was from the middle and it was using this shell concept and starting off with, as a square and I've seen several comments about wanting people wanting to do it as a rectangle. So I decided during a big snowstorm to put my hook in the wind and figure it out on how to do it as a rectangle. So it took me quite some time to do it but what I decided to do is that I came up with the one that was in here within blue. But I realized being a host on YouTube is that when I do one size people are saying I wish you would have done the twin size or I wish you would have done a wheelchair size or a baby blanket. So what I decided to do is I spent a whole day trying to figure out all the mathematics and doing a sample. So here is the twin size and here are the other sizes. So the size that's going to be listed in the pattern is the, si is the size that's suggested in the video title. So the introductions for all four of these will be exactly the same. So let me tell you what the differences are. So the small size is going to cover baby blankets, child size blankets, teenager blankets, even queen size with draping on the sides of the mattress and king size for both the mattress and the drape. For the medium that we have here this is for wheelchairs, baby blankets, a child size blankets and teenager blankets. So it has that nice uh, item that you have. So the spine is longer so that it will grow more in a rectangular format. For the large size, great for child size and teenager size blankets. And then what we have here for this one here, this one is the twin size uh, for that. You can use it for cribs if you want to do that, cradles, uh, queen size with no drape as well. So just make sure that if you ever do it for a crib or a cradle you're just uh, conscious of what you can put in that. So just exercise your caution and some people suggest not to put blankets and those kind of things. So I'm going to leave that to your discretion. I do have it figured out just in case that's something that you're interested in. So without further ado I used Karen uh, Jumbo or sorry Karen one pound yarn. For tutorial reasons I'm going to have some fun here with the Karen Jumbo yarn. This is called Lake Mist. It's very much like Red Heart Super Saver Ombre where it changes color on its own and so when you see the colors changing we're going to go. So let's go on to the size that's suggested in the video title and let's show you how to get started because once you get the spines done then you can get everything done and it will grow out evenly even if you change the hook or the yarn. So here's an example. So this is the very first one I did just to test it and so this is the medium size that you saw within the blue sample. And so it got bigger and bigger and I went and I just had some fun with the color play with the Karen one pound yarn and I thought it turned out really good. The trick with this is that we need to get the spine figured out and the shells in place and then once you get that done it's just a matter of repeating two rows or two rounds over and over and over. So the different size of the spines is obviously shorter for the small, a little bit longer for the large and then there's a significant portion then for the twin size. Let's begin the size that we're promising today. So I'm now going to be moving on to the large size. So it's one more segment bigger than this one. So it's multiples of six in order to expand it out even further. So that's kind of the concept. What we have to watch out for though is the spaces in the middle right here are a different spacing count than it is on the edging. So just remember that the edge piece right on either any of the sizes really is always different. So just keep that in mind. So let's begin the large size next. Let's begin by creating a slip knot. And as we begin this one we need to chain a total of 29. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, go all the way to 29 and meet me back here in a moment. Okay so let's begin. I have 29 done. So it's similar to what we just did in the medium size. The difference is, is that it's a longer chain of course. So I want you to go fifth chain from the hook. So just count it back. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and that's where I want you to place in a double crochet on the back hump of the stitch. I then want you to chain one and then one more double crochet into the same chain. That these double crochets, chain one, double crochet is considered a V stitch in the pattern if you're following that. Chain one and I need you to skip the next four chains here and go to the fifth and you are going to place in a double crochet on the fifth one stay on the back hump it will look nicer. Now 
The next one is going to be a V stitch. So in the next chain place a V stitch. So it's a double crochet. Chain one double crochet. And then a double crochet in the next chain. And that's the foundation of a new shell that will go in in the future. Before moving on you're going to chain one and I told you that the counts between this section and the next in the middle of these uh, are different ch uh, chain count for skipping. So in the ends we skip four but in between the middles we skip only three. So one, two, three and then double crochet in the fourth one and what we're doing is we're recreating this like this again. So it's a double crochet. The next one is gonna be a V stitch. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet and then a double crochet in the next chain. So we're still in the middle of, of this. So you're gonna chain one before jumping and you're going to skip only three. So double crochet and you're creating this foundation that you did before. So double crochet in that one. The next one is a V stitch. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet and then double crochet in the next one. Now we're running out of chains so you're gonna skip the next four chains and you'll see it's the fifth one away and before you begin you're just gonna chain up one and you are going to begin and circle all the way around this chain so that you'll be on the underside when we're done this end section. So in the very last chain you're skipping four and on the last chain you're gonna place in a V stitch. And I want you to think about these V stitches as a side. So this matches this side. So we're gonna do the end piece which is gonna go across. So you're gonna chain one before you do that and then V stitch into that same stitch. And this will be considered the short side then. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And noticing that I'm just kind of rotating this so that it will be on the underside. So everything is upside down. So chain one and V stitch once more in that same stitch and your whole chain is now upside down and you've circled all the way around. Before you begin this bottom side chain one and where you have the bottom side now is exactly where you need to go. You can see where you need to go. So you're just gonna reach over and double crochet in the first double crochet spot that you have already before. So you're skipping technically four and you're going and double crocheting in that one. And then the next one has a V stitch. You can see that underneath. So place a V stitch there. So just think about it like a, a, a mirror and you're just placing the stitches as you see it but on the upper side. And so remember you have a double crochet after that V stitch. Now as you progress then across you chain one and look for the next one. So double crochet in the first one and then look to what you're gonna do. It's a V stitch so you're gonna place a V stitch there and then double crochet in the next. And you keep doing this all the way across nice and simple. So chain one before moving on and then double crochet in the double crochet, V stitch in the next and then double crochet in the next. Right there. Now before you move on a portion of this is already done. So chain one before you start and I need you to place in a V stitch where this V stitch is hanging out. And then chain one and then we'll talk. So we have the two V stitches on both sides. So the only thing missing now is a double crochet to finish this to be a V stitch. So you're going to put in a double crochet in the, into that same stitch chain one and you're going to attach it to the fourth chain of the beginning chain five that you had. And so you do that and so then that concludes that to be a V stitch. So you should see a V, V, V. There's three of them and you should see that on the other side too. So V, V and V. Let's move on now to row number two or round number two. The nice thing about round number two is that every V stitch will have a shell work and every space in between will have just a single crochet that will hold it in. So to begin that you're going to slip stitch to the next chain one space noticing that this is a V stitch. This is a chain one space that's between two V stitches and those are where you're going to place in your 
stitch work. So just slip stitch over, chain one and single crochet in. So in the middle of the V stitch you're going to place in seven double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now the first time you do the single crochet in it's gonna feel wrong but you have to trust me. Right here you're going to put in a single crochet and that will secure down that shell. Now the next V stitch is right here. Okay and that's where you're gonna put seven double crochets. So one. Originally when I designed this I had it so that there wasn't as much in the center here to make it a lot more easier to see but then it ends up with a huge hole in the middle of your blanket which didn't uh, sit well with me at all. So I wanted that extra double crochet on both sides of the V stitch just to kind of fill it in. Once that's in you're gonna come in between the two groups right here and you're going to single crochet to hold it down and then look for the next V stitch and place in seven. So please do this across and I'll see you on the end of this row before we do the turn and we'll talk about how we go around on a, on a, on an end and I'll be right back. So I'm coming up very close so I have my single crochet in here and here is my turning around. So the first V stitch right here so the single is in the space so that's gonna have seven single crochets. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Maybe I should actually put the seven in, right? So you're going to separate the two V stitches apart from each other. So this is one V stitch, the seven are in. Here's the next V stitch and you need to place in a single crochet right here. It's before that V stitch. Now this is the end, the short side. So place in seven double crochets there too. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we look for the next V stitch and go to the space before it. Single crochet in to hold it down and then in this V stitch also another seven. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then look for the next space which is right here. It's a big one. So that's a single crochet in. So when you think about it this is the short side right here just this little one. This right here is a corner and this is a corner in the next round. So it almost looks like a three leaf clover on the ends. So working across like you did on the other side you're looking for the V stitch. So you'll put your seven double crochets in and then put in a single in the space and then seven in the next V and etc. And please do this and make sure you turn the corner and I'll see you on the other side near the end of this round. And I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm coming around. I'm near to the end. I gotta finish this short side before I can say I'm done. So I have my seven in here. I come to the space before the V stitch and then the last V stitch here will be seven double crochet. So the color is just changed on its own with this uh, Karen Jumbo in Lake Mist color. So it really kind of provides a really unique perspective on the yarn when you do something like this in this kind of pattern. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, but if you like, if you don't like random then that's a problem of course but you can always change your colors whenever you feel like it. So you get seven double crochets in. That's it. So slip stitch to the very first one and we're going to begin rounds number three and four which is going to be the repeat until you're done. Let's begin round number three and four. In round number three what we're going to do is we're going to establish these V stitches all over again. It does not look the same as this one though. This is just a filler and what we're going to do is that we're gonna start off in the corner. And when we start off in the corner we need to chain four and that will count as a double crochet and a chain one. So one, two, three, that's a double crochet and then the fourth one is a chain one space and I need you to double crochet back into that same spot that you did the join with. This would be considered a V stitch. Now to turn the corner in this round the corners consist of one V stitch then chain three and then another V stitch into the same spot and this will make 
a 90 degree turn corner. Sorry, it's a B stitch, so it's a double crochet. Chain one, one double crochet. So your corners will square off just like that. So you're only gonna play within these single crochets and you're not going to interfere with these stitches that you have of the shells. So to jump over here, you have to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five, and come to the next single crochet and you need to place in a double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. So essentially a B stitch. This chain is gonna stay in limbo until the next round where we're gonna lock it into place. So how do we get to the next space? We chain five. So one, two, three, four, five, and then we V stitch into the next single crochet after the shell. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna ask you to go across this and I'll see you at the turn in just a few seconds from now. So as you approach a corner, the corners are looking weird when you have a round that finishes with shells and the corner is right here and here. See the indentation in? So as it gets bigger, the, uh, the, end, the sides will look very similar to this. We just happen to be on a short side right now, right at the very beginning of a project. So let's chain five to get to that corner. So one, two, three, four, five. And in the corner, chain one, sp uh, chain one spot, you're going to do a V stitch. And then how do you turn? You chain three. So one, two, three, and in the same spot, you're going to place in another V stitch. And that will secure a 90 degree turn. Just like that. Now how do you get to this one? Did you say chain five? One, two, three, four, five, and then you come to this one. So this round, whenever you do it, round number three is very, very quick. So it's a corner, so it's a V stitch, chain three, and a V stitch. It's the other shell work that will slow you down a little bit, but you make it up in this round here. So how do you get to the next one? You chain five. So one, two, three, four, five, and then do your V stitch there. So I want you to please do this all the way across and I want you to do the next turn as you go and I'm gonna meet you right back to where we started in just a few moments from now. So just work your way to what you already know and I'll see you at the end of this round. Okay, so I have that. Okay, so I just gotta finish this off. So I have my turn that I just did and I'm going to chain a total of five. So one, two, three, four, five, and then just join it to the top, to the third chain of the four. And that's where you're going to pick up and if you lay it flat, you will notice that the last round kind of squares everything off or does a rectangular in that sense. So let's begin round number four, which is the ending of the repeat. So round number four, right where we are sitting is incorrect. So we need to go in this space in the, uh, in the V stitch. So just slip stitch on over and then that's where your story is gonna begin. You need to chain three and then apply six double crochets into that same V stitch. So with the chain three and the six, that gives you a count of seven. So seven is your magic number for these shells. Okay, and so once I have my, my seven in there, which includes that chain three space, the next one is the corner itself. So place in a single crochet right into that corner and then you're gonna look for the next one right here which is the other part of the corner and there will be seven double crochets there. And I'm about to show you something unique with, that goes on in this if you haven't already told, uh, know that. So four, five, six, and seven. Now here's your shell work that you see and here's your chain five. You need to go into the fourth shell for a single crochet, but don't ignore this. You wanna place in your hook into the fourth shell and when you do this, it's a single crochet, make sure that that chain stays on top of the hook so when you wrap this yarn, it gets stuck underneath it. So pull through and then single crochet and now that chain five is completely underneath that single crochet to hold it down. Come to the next V stitch and place in seven double crochets. So we have one, two, three, four, 
three, four, five, six, and seven. And then you come to the next shell, go to the fourth one, single crochet and trap that chain five into position by single crocheting right up over top of it so it gets stuck underneath. So what I want you to do is go all the way to the next side here or to the next uh, corner and we'll just recap on how to do a corner and I will be there in just a moment from now. Okay so I'm ready for a corner. So I have my single crochet over top of that chain five so holding it in. So the corners, the V stitches automatically get your shells. So we know that. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and because it's a corner the chain three is by itself here single crochet right into that one and then start your next V stitch with the, the seven double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. And so now we're, this short edge is gonna get longer. So every time you go around on this, the V stitch round, it increases the number of shells and the V stitch by only one. So last time there was one shell on this side, this time there would be a total count of two. So make sure you go right up over top of that chain when you do your single crochet and then you start the next one which is your corner. So you'll have your seven double crochets in. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and it's a corner right so that put it right into the chain three space a single and then your next V stitch is just automatically turned. So you can see that you've increased your one uh, side to now have two and that'll happen every time you do these V stitches you'll be increasing by one. So even on the length it increased by just one shell and that'll happen on every side. So please go all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round and I'm going to show you a little tip that I would do if you were me and I were you. So I'll be right back in a moment. When you get all the way around I've just done my corner and we've already started with this first corner. So the sides will get longer but after the last single crochet I need you to slip stitch to the top of the first chain three. Here's what I'm recommending to you. If you, you need to start these V stitches all over again that we did before but you gotta start here and you're currently here. If you slip stitch yourself all the way to there it's gonna be noticeable. I, I, it just is gonna be ugly. So what I'm recommending to you is to trim your yarn even if you're using the same color just trim your yarn now so that when you begin then the next round you can officially start just exactly the same way that you started it before. So the only difference is you have to attach your yarn and you're gonna go right into the single crochet. You'll chain your four uh, to, to go in there and then ch um, and then put your double crochet and then chain three to turn and then a V stitch back in. And you will just do exactly what you did before. The difference is, is that it's gonna be bigger. Now here's the tip for you, uh, another tip. Take this end and throw it through a tapestry needle. It will come out on you if you don't. That just is a natural law of, of physics. So what I'm recommending, turn it over to the back side and if you got color changing like I do, you can do this. So if you are gonna do color play, I'm just gonna weave it in the back end while I'm yapping at you. So if you are gonna do color play, you wanna change it on the rounds that you're going to start the V stitches so that the shell and the V stitch match each other. It looks better. But you are the artist. You can decide to do whatever you want. When you use these color transitional yarns that I'm, I'm showing you, as it gets bigger the yarn uh, colors begin to change on its own underneath the project. So then your V stitch will be a different color and that's something that's kind of neat as well. So you can decide what you would like to do. So this is the large size version. So what I'm going to move on in the tutorial series to doing the extra large which would be a twin size blanket and it's actually really neat and this is your foundation row to get started and I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.